Hi, I'm Paul Montone. I'm here with Greg Kaminsky and Charlotte Deason Robiard, and today we're talking about getting input from students. Charlotte, nice to have you here. Thanks, Paul. Like Paul said, my name is Charlotte. I teach reading, writing, and English, and I teach these classes in all modalities, online, remote, and face-to-face -face at PCC. Charlotte, what are your strategies and approaches for getting input from students on the effectiveness of their learning environment? One strategy I've been using a lot lately is creating Google surveys or polls to gather feedback and sort of take the pulse of the whole class. And I use these throughout the term, but often uh, I use them after I've introduced a new assignment. And it allows me to get a little bit of feedback on just how they're feeling about the assignment, but also to get some questions from them. So I actually know how they're feeling um, about getting started and what they might need a little bit more time spent on in class. Thanks, Charlotte. So I'm wondering, uh, how have you used that input from students to improve the class and the student learning experience? And maybe you could show us an example. Sure, Greg. Yeah, I'll show you what it looks like. So one of the ways that I've used it um, to sort of improve the class and get input is just by looking at the individual questions that students ask. But also one of the cool things about Google surveys is that they turn everything into data. So I'll screen share and show you what that looks like. So this is an example of a survey that I gave to my Writing 122 students after I had introduced an essay assignment. And so um, Google surveys is really user friendly. I think here's what it looks like on my end uh, when I've just written the questions. And also this is what it looks like for the students. I have instructions at the top that they should take a few minutes to answer these questions about their progress on an essay, which I've introduced and they've started working on. And I ask them just simple questions like, where are you in the writing process? How would you describe your general understanding? What aspect of the assignment would you like to spend some more class time going over? So I get feedback uh, really immediately about where students are in the process. So for example, you know, 40% of students have picked their topic and started researching and about 40% haven't started research. And then there's like, a you know, 16% are still unsure about their topic. So immediately I have a good sense of like, how much I might want to dedicate some time to talking about research and topics because I know about how many students have sort of gotten to which point in the assignment. Um, as I scroll down, you can see it does this with all of the multiple choice questions. Um, I get to see how my students would describe their general understanding of the assignment. And then this question, what aspects of the assignment would you like to spend some more class time going over? This is what really uh, helps me determine what type of lesson I might do or what type of resources I might post in an online class, because I get to see that, you know, half of the class really wants tips for getting started on the writing process and for writing something called pie paragraphs. I can sort of dedicate more time depending on that student feedback that I get from them. The last question is open-ended. What questions do you have about the assignment? And I often use this to, to create a Google document and just answer each question. It's a great idea. Uh, you're getting such precise input on exactly what the students would, would like, and you're getting it right away. Uh, it's easy to look at. How, how often uh, would you do this during a term? Usually I just do it when I have recently introduced a new assignment so that I can gauge understanding of the assignment and so that I can learn a little bit about pacing out the next few weeks and knowing what we need to spend time on and where. This seems like a great tool as well to motivate student presence in the class and ease anxieties uh, when it comes to speaking to their uh, instructors and getting additional help. So I think that's really great. Yeah, it certainly creates more engagement. They suddenly feel a little bit more safe and comfortable sharing the other questions that come up because it kind of normalizes, you know, not understanding something the first time and putting it out there to get feedback from your instructor because they see that they're not the only ones. Yeah, I can see how you get a lot more input uh, in using this method than from the student Q&A discussion area, for example. I'm just curious, do you also use that method? Do you have a student Q&A 
Yes, I do have that. Maybe it's because I don't push it a lot, but I don't see as much engagement in something like that as I do in an activity like this. It's not just a really general open-ended, what are your questions full stop, but it's saying like, we just read this assignment sheet. Here's some options. What's a thing you'd like to spend more time on? Right. I can see how it really helps to make the questions very specific as you have done in that way. So I'm also curious, uh, how has it supported or improved your work as an instructor in the online learning environment? I think it has supported my own work because it gives me a lot more information about what I should be spending time on. I've learned as I have used this tool that sometimes the things that I think are really clear and that I'm ready to move on from are not the things that the students think are really clear and they're ready to move on from. So in that way, yeah, it's really influenced my teaching and, um, you know, it's encouraged me to be a little more flexible in terms of my lessons and to have things ready to go, but to know that my students can sort of lead me towards what we actually need to spend time on or what they would like to work on more. I'm curious about how much time it takes as an instructor, mainly at the beginning, getting started in this process. For me, it is really fast and I, I use the whole Google suite a lot. I use Google Docs and um, their sort of version of Excel for lots of things. But I think even if you are new to it, it's pretty fast to learn. You had shared some surveys. One of them had asked students if there were any words they weren't familiar with in the instructions. And I'm curious what you do with that. That's an opportunity to further explain the materials for students, or are you taking that as input in ways that you can craft assignment instructions for students in the future? I use it for both of those things. So sometimes the words that students um, write down are key terms that I'm teaching, like thesis or introduction paragraph. And sometimes I'm like, what? We just talked about thesis last week. <laughs> but it's one of those things that I've really learned a lot by asking that question that it's like, wow, they, you know, they really need that to keep on being defined. It's still something that they're sort of growing through and learning in this level class. Um, but another thing that I learn is that there's language that I didn't think was specialized that is specialized. And often our students come from a wide range of different backgrounds and familiarity with the English language. And so um, it's super helpful for me because sometimes there are words that I, as a native English speaker, don't think of as being particularly confusing, but they are. I might notice a pattern that there's some language that I'm using that might even be like an idiom or something. And it's really confusing a lot of students because it's not something they're familiar with. It sort of nudges me towards like, oh, that's kind of a specialized phrasing that would only work if someone was like a native English speaker who was born in the United States. And that's not necessarily my student body. So I should take that out and try to use something that's more clear and universal. And other times it just gives me feedback that like, oh, wow, even though, you know, we've been talking about the concept of um, counter argument, they are all marking that as like a word that they want a little more information on. So maybe I need to like do another lesson on that to make it clearer. Charlotte, you've offered all these great, you know, strategies with, with getting student input. What might you recommend to instructors who'd be curious to implement this in their own online classes? Yeah, it's a relatively low stakes, low labor thing to try. And the nice thing about anything in the Google suite is that you can also Google how to use it. <laughs> so if you find yourself confused, I often find the quickest thing is just to like type that question in and see if you can get an answer to it. If you want to know what your students are confused about or what concepts they want to cover or how they would rate their own uh, understanding of a certain assignment or project, then you can try it out. And the results that you get are sort of beautifully put together for you in a way that's easy to access and easy to share anonymously and easy to revisit as many times as you want to. Charlotte, thanks so much for sharing what seems to have been a very high impact practice that you've introduced into your class for getting input from students. It's helping both students and it's helping you. So we really appreciate you taking the time to, to talk with us today. 
Yeah, thanks a lot, Charlotte. I uh, am familiar with Google Forms. I use it quite a bit, but I haven't used it with a class yet. So I'm going to do that now. That seems like a great idea. Thanks so much for having me. It was great to talk a little bit about teaching with you both.